If you follow my Instagram page, then you'll know that back in July, I went out and made an impulse purchase. And that impulse purchase was this, a 009 Scar Lowy. And recently, I felt he needs a layout to run on. So I started building this. Wanna see how I built it? After seeing the wonderful Bailey's Wharf at the Northampton and District Model Railway Show, I was inspired to build my own layout. With the Pico 009 starter pack and some leftover N-gauge points from another project, I decided to build a layout to the dimensions of 1m by 75cm. The layout was to be a simple oval with a passing loop and a siding. I wanted the scene to be deep so I opted for a fiddle yard hidden in the hill and a river running through the middle. The baseboard is 9mm ply on a softwood frame with additional bracing through the riverbed. I had some leftover insulation from when I insulated my garage and decided to use this for the scenery. I was inspired by the Talaclin and Snail Beach railways and I wanted nice high bridges. Therefore, the track would sit on the insulation in a similar build method that I had seen used on layouts built in the USA. Using leftover cutoffs of the insulation board, I cut it to shape and glued it to the layout. I used a grip fix type adhesive, but I would recommend removing the foil from the phone when doing this, as I did have trouble sticking it together. With the insulation in place, I glued down some brown paper on top and marked out where everything was going to go scenic wise. The river through the middle and the track on the outside. I also opted for two sidings off the passing loop which could be worked to serve an industry. Not entirely sure what the industry would be, I left it to an Instagram vote to decide if it would be for unloading or loading, with loading being the winner. I then marked out the contours of the hills on the foam and cut it to shape. With the scenic side now complete, it was time to lay the track in this area, but I'd have to consider how I'd operate the points. So I want hands-free operation on the layout, ideally, especially at the front. Um, and I had wanted to do the wire and tube method, but as I'm using the Celotex and to build up the scenery, it's going to be quite deep. Um, between the top of uh, where the track bed is to going underneath the baseboard. So you a bit of wire, you're going to need something about you know, something this long. And if we demonstrate, I'll get it in the hole. Just demonstrate there. There's too much resistance. So that plan clearly isn't going to work. So I've opted for just standard Pico solenoid point motors. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut holes in the baseboard or in the scenery at the top and then sink the point motors in that way. So to get the point motor in, uh, these are obviously the width of a 00 gauge track. So this is be the same with N gauge as well, and the 009 and N are the same width. Um, the point motors are going to half, cover half a point. So it's best to work out which side you want the point motor to be covering. Um, now, if I ever did have to pull the track up and get the point motor out, I think ideally the minimum amount of track over the top of it is probably best. So I'm going to go this way. And I'm just going to uh, slot this point motor roughly where it's going to go. This one's got a bit of a bend in the arms, I can see it. But, uh, doesn't have to be precision. Just enough so I know where to draw around. So I know what I'm cutting out. So that's drawn. And of course, the Celotex stuff is it's so easy to cut. Just a case of just getting a knife. 
I'm just going to remove this other trap just so I can work around it. Um, now the other thing I like to do when uh, marking out the track is I uh, tend to mark where the rail joins are. So I've got these marks here, so that when it comes back to putting the track back down, you know it's not out of place. Uh, particularly when you are trying to do something like this and making holes for point notice, because you don't want stuff to go um, out of shape. Out of shape. Don't think that's what they're looking for. Anyway. So, nice and easy to say this stuff. Very easy to cut. So if I can see the film there, this might even actually be easier because I think it's actually gonna join. So, um, and I've just got this old uh, filling knife. And I found this was quite useful. Just to push down there. And then we'll dig it out with a screwdriver. Now obviously it's gonna be a great ghastly holes and the uh, scenery now so what I will do is I'll make a cardboard insert uh, to put between the point motor and the point itself so it will sit here um, and then that can then sit over the hole and cover up where the motor sits so there we are like a wedge of cheese coming out of there Seems built up with uh, two 25 mil boards. I need to dig just a little deeper, so I need to dig into the next um, piece of uh, vertex underneath. So again, it's just a case of cutting the hole and digging out. So there we are, that's the um, second hole cut out. Um, so it goes right down to the bottom of the baseboard. So I'll just drill for the wires into the uh, baseboard itself. And as you can see, point motor slots in nicely. So I say, I'll cover that hole up with a bit of cardboard and I'm gonna have some cork base for the track bed anyway. And uh, that should blend it in nicely. So I've done one side of the uh, river, um, cut all the point motors out, and then I've drilled into the baseboard so the wires can be fed through. And then I've got some feeds up here. Again, it's, it's a case of planning ahead really when you've got sort of scenery like this. Drill through and then drill through to the baseboard underneath so we can fed some wires so that the sidings can be isolated or run separately. Um, so yeah, I'm now gonna uh, stick this side down and then move on to the other side of the river. So I noticed uh, when I was carving the uh, scenery that where I glued the two layers together with this uh, grab adhesive, it was uh, still a little tacky. Um, it stuck, but I think because it was between the two foil backings and there were for the moisture to escape. So I peeled off the foil backing and I'm just gonna put this grab adhesive on and then I'm gonna glue it to the baseboard. Hope that the wires line up with the holes I've drilled. So I'll have to glue down. In fact, I might just get some wire just to test this to make sure it goes all the way through the baseboard. Yeah, 
we are. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the final one. So that's, uh, that's that side done. So I glued the rear scenery down and then moved on to start working on the bridges. I made car templates for where each bridge would go. One for over the road, one over the river, and one on the other side of the river for where the station platform would go. But where the station was going to be placed was going to cause a few issues. So the problem I have is here, uh, where the station is. When I sort of thought about the layout and come up with the plan, I'd uh, decided to have passing loops here and I thought I'd build a station at the passing loops. Um, and there's two sort of, well, three, I suppose, issues with this. Firstly, there's very few uh, stations that are built over the river on a bridge. Um, I mean, there's London Bridge, but this should be a narrow gauge railway, which were always built on a budget it's because money was tight. So the infrastructure would be cheap. So I imagine putting a building on top of a bridge over a river isn't going to be particularly cheap. The other issue is I watched a video of a cab ride from uh, Dolgok and I've never been on the Italian Railway but watching it you'd see that the passing loops were actually before the station which made sense because that meant that trains in either direction could stop at the platform here they can only use this side if we want to use the traditional up and down line so this I mean this could be bi-directional as someone's using for shunting um, so I'm going to have to be clever about this and sort of make it convincing that, you know, the railway did build the station over the river because they had to. Um, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to have a hill here. So maybe the, you know, the landscape forced them to do that. Uh, and then, it, you know, it won't be a brick built structure. It'll probably just be a very cheaply made wooden platform with a wooden shelter on it. So we'll see how we get on. So I started building the bridge with a mixture of balsa wood and matchsticks. It was an instant hit on Instagram, one of my best liked photos. But there was an issue. And the issue is, well, there's two actually. I've built the bridge and while I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out look wise, I think it's too wide, particularly for a narrow gauge line that was probably trying to save money. And the idea originally was that the platform goes around here and then there'd be a station building here. Now I've used this station building just an example, but it's a lot bigger than what I probably will use in the end. So looking at the bridge, I probably need to remove this section and make it slightly more narrow. Now the other problem I'm having is I've done it and it's a sort of a trestle design and I've used these end gauge uh, trestles to go underneath to uh, span the bridge and hold the weight. But I'm not quite sure how to build into the riverbank to you know stop the earth moving and the bridge collapsing um so i think that's back to the drawing board for this bridge in the end i decided to cut into the riverbank and build two stone piers for the bridge to sit on the trestle would go in the middle and the wooden decking would sit on top i also decided to weather the decking to get it ready for the final fit but as with most model railways trouble was looming so i tried to do the bridge supports using mount board and air drying clay. But as you can see, there was too much moisture that got into the mount board, everything distorted and the walls cracked. So that really wasn't the best plan. So I'm gonna build it again. This time I'm gonna put a step in to allow the bridge supports to sit in place. And the structure is gonna be made of plastic card and then I'll use the air drying clay again to create the stone appearance. I scraped the stone into the clay whilst it was still wet, and as you can see, the result is a lot better. Once dry, I painted and weathered the piers ready for installation. So here's the bridge, pretty much finished. Needs to be glued and the uh, truss girders need weathering. I'll just show you how it's made up. So as you can see there, there was the plastic card I used to make the uh, ends of the bridges and then I've covered it in dash clay, scribed, let it dry and then I've weathered it. The girders are the uh, engage uh, ones that have been chopped down to fit in between. And as I've showed you, this is then the balsa wood 
and matchsticks all glued together to make the decking up for the bridge. And then so I have uh, two lines here and the platform, which I've decided to make thinner. So I've removed a part of the bridge here. And the platform will go around here like this. So moving on, I've now got the next two bridges to do. Or, as I'm now thinking, maybe a viaduct. Because the original plan was to have uh, a bridge here to go over the, uh, the river and then another bridge for the road. But the idea of this area here is this is uh, sort of a bit of a flood plain, so it floods quite a bit. Um, and the idea I originally thought was, well, it, you know, it flooded and it's eroded away and the hillscape came down like this. And then the railway came along and they built a bridge over the road. And then they put a bit of um, soil and that down here to, you know, a bit of earthworks to build up a bank to then continue the railway and then put another bridge to cross the river. But if this area floods and it washes away, I'm going to have to cut into the, this scenery a little bit more to fit this bridge and cut into this bridge. I'm going to have about, about maybe this much sort of uh, bank left to build on, which is really not a lot. And if this floods and erodes and washes away, then... I can imagine that after a couple of years, the railway is going to be in trouble because it's going to be sagging one side because you know, it's washed away and uh, there's nothing there. So now I'm thinking, rather than have this bank, which I wanted because I thought it visually it looked quite nice, but I think realistically it wouldn't exist in real life, I've decided to um, attempt to build a viaduct. So I have a, a curved viaduct, so I'm making life very easy for myself with a curved viaduct. And that will start here, so we still have the road. And I think I will have the flood markers. I may even flood the road just to show that it does flood because I think I'm going to model autumn. Um, then I have another arch here and then the final arch over the river. And I'm going to do it that way. So I've come into the kitchen to do this. I've paused Charlie at Chadwick whilst I was explaining to you. So um, I'm using quite a large bit of card. This is an A1 mount card. It's been chopped up quite a bit already. Uh, this is, I think, what I originally used to do my um, transition curves on my double O gauge layout. Um, so to make the viaduct, I just marked out a bit of blue tack on the sleepers of the size. And because it's curved, I mean, I don't want to make the viaduct too wide. I want a nice sort of narrow viaduct, ideally. Um, so as you can see, the loco's just a little bit wider than the sleepers. But for any bogey vehicles, I want to make sure they go round them. I don't own any 009 bogey stock at the moment. So I've got this American box car. I think it might still be a bit small compared to the um, some of the 009 coaches you can get. But I'll use it as a rough guide just to mark out how wide. So let's move the track leg. It's called the blue tack. I saw that out. But it's just a rough idea of how wide I need to make the viaduct. So once I've marked the bridge up, I worked out where the river was and the road just by um, putting the card over the layout, marking it out. And then to do my bridge sides, I then took a piece of string and uh, held it along the edge, marking it with a pencil and then measuring it. To work out how far the sides were, and then again using the string to work out distances for the arches, so how far away the river was from the end, etc. And I took the measurements, marked it all out, and then cut out two sides in this mount board with the arches. And now I am currently decorating with um, Slater's plastic lard. This is uh, Flemish Bond brick. And I'm basing the viaduct on that Dolgok viaduct. So I'm doing this nice little stone pattern here with the bricks in the middle. Slightly tedious, but I think it'll look all right when done. So as I say, yeah, the brickwork is uh, Slater's Flemish Bond plastic card. And then I've just got some uh, standard cardboard here that I'll then score and mark out to make the stone work for the rest of the viaduct. And here is the viaduct in its finished primed glory, awaiting painting and weathering. It really was a labour of love. I was hoping that this layout would be a quick build, 
but this viaduct took at least two weeks to complete, mostly because of the stonework and the brickwork that needed cutting out and adding on. However, I was pleased with the finished result, as you can see here. The weathering is based on Dolcock Viaduct, and I'm really pleased with the result. So here is the completed viaduct. It's uh, taken some time to build this, a lot longer than I anticipated. Uh, and it is, as I've shown in the methods, a uh, plastic card sitting on the mount board structure. So I've cut a slot in the terrain, just out of shot here. It's time to fit the bridge. Get that on there and get the track, make sure it fits. Go. My latest purchase. Couldn't go to the Hornby uh, Great Electric Train Show about getting something. I think everyone else did. And here we are, there's my ah. Slight problem. Somehow Despite all my planning and drawing, one of the pillars of the viaduct appeared to be sat somewhat in the river, rather than on the bank. It wasn't quite what I had imagined. Well, this is definitely an issue, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, the river bank, I think I will just bring it in slightly here and uh, blend it in, make it look like hose a little bit around there slightly annoying i did have to draw it out but i'm pleased how the bridge looks uh i based it on dolgok viaduct and i based the weathering on dolgok viaduct as well it's just getting some handrails up the top here but apart from the uh slight floating pillar i think it's come out all right well i think that's will uh, wrap us up now for episode one but before i go i'd like to uh thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel and now have over 500 subscribers. So thank you very much for those of you who uh, like my content and want to see more. Uh, if you're not subscribed but you have enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you in episode two. Or we'll be seeing disasters like this. So this point has popped out. And I can't get the bugger back in. just doesn't look right. Because this them up. I've had them up twice now. And for some reason, they will work when I test the point motor outside of the layout. But as soon as I put it back in the scenery, just don't want to go. Thanks for watching.